Welcome back guys, I'm Christian Beyer, coming to you from the favorite Caterpillar dealership shop here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Today I'd like to go over with you guys how to build a pneumatic coolant system pressure tester. Many of the machines we work on have cooling systems that range from anywhere from 20 to 80 gallons of coolant. Due to that, a hand pumped cooling system pressure tester just doesn't cut it a lot of times. Obviously it's a waste of time and of energy being that it's rather hard, pumping for a half an hour at a time. So I took a regular hand pumped cooling pressure tester kit and turned it into a pneumatic pressure tester kit. I'd like to show you guys how I did this. All right guys, so starting out with what we need, uh, for the parts I have, an 18 millimeter wrench, 5 8 wrench and a 7 16 wrench, uh, some thread tape, I have a regulator off of Amazon, uh, a male to male adapter, quarter or one eighth to quarter, one quarter close fitting, and the air chuck I need, air chuck coupler I need. I also have a quarter by quarter ball valve, and then obviously the hose and the uh, cap assembly off of my Stant uh, hand pump cooling system pressure tester and that's what has the 1 8 uh, thread pipe or pipe thread on it so that's why we need this adapter so let's get started So there we are. So the reason I assembled it this way, uh, obviously my air is coming in here. You can see the arrows through the regulator so the flow is correct. I put my ball valve in between the regulator and the air supply so that once I've filled this up, uh, filled up the cooling system with air, have my air set at the right pressure that I'd like it at, I can shut off my air supply and I can watch on the gauge to see if I'm losing air anywhere. Also, um, the noise from the air filling the air system is shut off. That way I can listen for leaks throughout the cooling system. So that's my reason for assembling it this way. Uh, this should work pretty well. One thing on this assembly I'd like to point out is that this regulator came with a gauge that goes up to 230 PSI. I did order a new gauge. Uh, PIC, I believe, is the company. Uh, same exact same gauge as this except for the fact it only goes up to 60 psi the reason for this is that my cooling systems should never be above uh, 20 psi uh, while I'm pressure checking them for leaks so the gauge that goes up to 230 is perfect for other pneumatic applications but uh, on this the increments are just too small to be reasonable so now that we've made our assembly for pressure checking these cooling systems, I'd like to go over when and why I pressure check these cooling systems. On most repairs on these big trucks, for example, these big articulated haul trucks, uh, anything that has to do with engine and transmission, uh, cab removal, things like that, we usually drain out the cooling systems, most often having to in order to access these things. 
once I go back together with them, especially when I replace coolers on transmission jobs uh, or engine oil coolers, I make sure that I fill them with the vacuum uh, airlift system. That is nice because I can pull a vacuum on the system before I fill it with coolant checking for leaks. But I have found that a lot of times the vacuum at 20 inch pounds of mercury does not show a leak. Oftentimes I feel like in the rubber coupling hoses in these cooling lines, it actually sucks the leaks closed. So before I even hook up my vacuum airlift, I like to use this pressure tester. I usually try to keep it just above what cap pressure is on the system. And I like to fill it up and then leave it sit for a little bit in order to check for air leaks. This is good because it's a time saver. Obviously, without having filled 20 to 40 gallons of coolant in one of these trucks and then having to drain it all back out just to fix a leak and make a mess in the process, that may saves me a ton of time. I think this is a very efficient thing to do. It's very quick, especially now that we have a pneumatic pressure tester. So I'd like to show you guys how this thing hooks up and how I use it. So once up on the machine, obviously need to remove the cap install our seal into the filler neck next install our adapter install our pressure assembly open our valve then we, we can adjust our regulator up to just under 20 PSI. As it reaches that, shut off our valve and then we'll watch our pressure. Looks like it settled in a little bit so we'll add a little more pressure. Looks like we're right at 20 PSI right there. We'll watch it for a few seconds. If I was actually checking this, I might leave it sit for a minute or so. And it looks like we are good. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that segment and maybe you learned something that you can put into use. Uh, you know, that something like this, I believe, would work well even on cars with smaller cooling systems. The controllability of having the valve built into it so you're not over pressurizing your cooling systems. I believe in even co small cooling systems, this would work really well, save some time, add some efficiency to your job. So I really hope you took something away from this episode. Other than that, that's all I've got for you today. Signing out.